Okay, so where, where were we? So in the last video we were talking, we kind of introduced ourselves to um, kind of a, a bit of a revision of some organic chemistry and we introduced ourselves to the basic structures of the classic, the classic psychedelics. Uh, that is the tryptamines, LSD, DMT, psilocybin being the big ones, um, and uh, mescaline being the, the major kind of phenethylamine. Um, now, what I want to do in this video is, is talk about how these drugs actually activate receptors. So in, in the last unit, we spent a lot of time talking about receptors and how they work. Um, the idea that a ligand binds to a receptor induces some kind of conformational change in the receptor, which ultimately leads to the activation of one or more signaling pathways inside the neuron. And ultimately, it's, it's that signaling pathway that leads to some kind of change in the way the neuron functions, which ultimately leads to the effect on, on the brain overall and the effect on consciousness. Um, so in this video, I want to go look at that idea a little bit deeper and actually look at, uh, look at think about, um, explain what is actually going on when a ligand binds to a receptor. Um, how does this conformational change in the receptor take place? Um, why are certain agonists at, a, at the 5-HT2A receptor not psychedelic, such as serotonin? Um, the natural agonist, if you like, uh, the, the 5-HT2A receptor, whereas other agonists, the 5-HT2A receptor, such as LSD or psilocin or DMT, are most certainly uh, psychedelics. And there are other examples of, um, of agonists at the 5-HT2A receptor that both are or aren't uh, psychedelics. And by the end of this unit, you will understand uh, the differences between them, or at least as much as science understands the differences between them. Um, again, this is always, we're kind of really hitting the frontiers uh, of uh, modern pharmacology here. Um, okay, so, so when we think about the, the overall effect of a drug, um, particularly a psychoactive drug, um, the overall effect can be, can be kind of broken down, or the, the reason for the overall effect can be broken down into kind of two, two kind of categories. You can think about, okay, what kind of receptors does this drug activate? Does it activate just one or two receptors, which is quite rare actually, uh, or does the drug activate a large number of different receptors? Most drugs are what we would call rather promiscuous, and that is the, the term, right? Um, they're promiscuous drugs. They bind to a lot of different receptors, and they, they activate them to various degrees, and that is going to determine the overall effect. Um, this is one of the reasons why there are so many uh, psychedelic drugs that have very, very varying effects, uh, often quite subtle differences. Um, and if you've read uh, Phenethylamines I Have Known and Loved by Alexander Shulgin, you will know this. You will know that you know he, he created 130 or something like that phenethylamines, and they all often, many of them, a large number were inactive, and many of them were certainly psychedelic. Uh, varying potencies and varying effects and a lot of that is is likely to be because these drugs bind to different sets of receptors in the brain now we're not going to get into kind of the details of, of all the different kind of bi receptor binding profiles of all these drugs we're going to be focusing on the 5-HT2A receptor so the second category that, um, that can be used to kind of explain the overall effect of a drug uh, on the brain is is not which receptors it's, it binds to so much, but how it, it binds to the receptor and how it activates the receptor. Um, earlier in in the course, um, we we said basically that a, a ligand can be a, an agonist or an antagonist. It can either bind and activate the receptor, uh, or it can bind and have no uh, activating effect. We call it that an antagonist of course but actually as we will see in this unit it's a little bit more complicated than that um, and it, it's not a kind of a black and white issue of whether a drug activates or doesn't activate the receptor and there are different ways that drugs can activate the same receptor uh, so this is something that we're going to look at um, now of course we are focusing on the classic psychedelics in this course and as such 
we, we won't be looking at psychedelics that don't activate and work primarily at the 5-HT2A receptor. So we're not going to be looking at salvanorin, for example, um, or the kind of old world psychedelics, like the tropane alkaloids. Um, that will be another course. Okay, so, so for this video, what I want to do is we'll go back and look at some of the, the structures of these psychedelic molecules again, but this time we'll, we'll think about how they, how they actually interact with the ligand binding site, and you'll get then an, you will then get an idea, hopefully, uh, of how a drug actually induces this very, very important conformational change in the receptor, which is responsible for activating the receptor. So let's start. We'll start by looking at um, a molecule which I was supposed to introduce you to in the last video, but I didn't, uh, which is, of course, serotonin 5 hydroxytryptamine. So we'll look at that and we'll think about how 5 HT serotonin activates the serotonin receptor. So let's go now. Okay, so first of all, let's, um, you know, what is serotonin? Well, serotonin is 5 HT, which equals 5 hydroxy tryptamine so it is a tryptamine so we should be able to draw this quite straightforwardly now as should you so how do we draw a tryptamine well we've got the phenyl ring um, we then complete that with the second ring so this forms the indole ring we then need to add two carbons plus the nitrogen or the amine group. Um, so that's tryptamine. Now to convert this to serotonin, all we need to do is add this hydroxyl group, uh, in other words, the OH. Okay, so when a pharmacologist um, or a chemist is looking at a drug and thinking, you know, how does this interact with the receptor? He's looking for certain structural features in the drug. And there are many types of chemical features that a drug can have that might give you a clue as to how it interacts with the receptor. So 5-HT serotonin is, is a pretty good example because it's got a number of features. So first of all, um, it has this all-important indole ring. Um, let me do it like this. Right, so here's the indole ring. And the indole ring is a is very kind of it's a flat structure, um, and it also has something called aromaticity. It's called an aromatic structure. You don't need to know what aromatic means. It doesn't mean that it kind of smells nice, although that is kind of where the name came from originally. It's to do with uh, the chemical properties of it. But it's a flat aromatic structure. It gives it has a certain distinctive shape and chemical properties. Now also you've got um, the amine. Now amines are very often in, chemi in, in, in molecular structures, they are often uh, in what's called a protonated form. And now what that means is basically it has an extra hydrogen. Um, and for reasons I'm not going to go into here, and that basically gives it a positive charge. So that nitrogen is positively charged. Um, similarly, uh, when you see hydroxyls, OH, so we can redraw the hydroxyl kind of like this. And hydroxyls often have a little bit of negative charge on the oxygen, often shown by a delta. So that's not a full negative charge, uh, and a little bit of positive charge on the hydrogen, so delta plus. So already uh, we can see a number of chemical features which might suggest how this molecule interacts with the receptor. So obviously, you know, positively charged regions of the um, of the molecule may well interact with negatively charged regions in uh, the receptor. Um, likewise, um, the, the negatively charged regions of the molecule may want to interact with um, positively charged regions of um, the receptor. Similarly, not quite as obvious, this flat 
uh, indole ring also wants to kind of slide into certain um, uh, certain parts of certain types of um, certain areas of the receptor in, in certain ways and this is a this is a whole kind of complex area of medicinal chemistry that we don't want to get into um, also you'll notice that um, quite obviously I'm going to delete this writing here um, but we've we've pointed out the the charge on the uh, the amine and the hydroxyl they also have a certain distance between them. Now that means that this 5-HT molecule might want to uh, interact with the receptor such that um, the, uh, the hydroxyl and the amine can interact properly with the, with the positive and negative charges. Okay, so let's draw the, let's redraw the Five H T. So we've got the amine, which is, as we said, often carries a positive charge, uh, and the the hydroxyl, which has a negative part and a positive part. And let's now draw in uh, the receptor. So the receptor site, the ligand binding site, kind of might look kind of like this. Let's say the um, the 5-HT molecule kind of slots in there. And the, 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 the ligand binding site might have, for example, it might have uh, certain parts that are negatively charged. Um, you know, remember a receptor is a string of amino acids, some of which carry um, different types of charges. Um, and there might be a, another negative charge, let's say, uh, here. So when this um, serotonin sits in the receptor as long as the um, the amine and the hydroxyl are in the right place in the right position they're not too far apart they're not too close together then they might attempt to or try to interact uh, with um, you know that the amine might try to interact with the negative charge and the positive charge on the hydrogen here interact with the other negative charge and you can imagine this having the effect of kind of pulling in on the receptor and changing the um, the receptor, uh, the shape of the receptor, the ligand binding site of the receptor. So this is really what's kind of responsible for the conformational change of the um, the receptor. Now, um, let's take um, a slightly different molecule. I'm going to draw it on the same um, diagram, but I'm going to remove this so we're no longer talking about um, serotonin and I'm also going to add although we're not really going to discuss too much uh, I'm going to add um, two methyl groups here so this is going to be just NH oh, yeah, that's correct yeah it still has a positive charge but it has two methyl groups so this is actually DMT that we've drawn here so so when DMT slots into the receptor, you can still get this, um, this interaction here, but there is no interaction uh, on this side, which means that the DMT doesn't kind of pull. You can imagine it pulling this side perhaps, but not this side because there isn't that interaction. Um, so the, in other words, the conformational change that DMT causes uh, in the ligand binding site and thus in the, in the protein uh, is different to um, serotonin and this is our first clue. Let's look at another example. All I need to do for this one is actually add a hydroxyl here. Um, try to remain. So let's say an OH here. Now this is silicin, the active ingredient of magic mushrooms. Now it does have um, the same hydroxyl as serotonin, except it's in a different position, which means there's a different distance between the, the amine and the hydroxyl. And that might mean um, that, for example, this positive charge on the hydrogen cannot interact with this negative charge here. Maybe it interacts with a different negative charge, or maybe there's a positive charge, let's say somewhere in the receptor, 
um, ligand binding site that interacts with this um, negative charge on the oxygen. Uh, and again, what the overall effect is that the the tersilicin molecule, when it slots into the receptor binding site, is going to be perhaps, yes, pulling and distorting the receptor, but differently to DMT and also differently to serotonin. So, this is the secret, really, of what's going on. When a molecule binds in the ligand binding site, it interacts with the receptor, and there may be uh, lots of different, there might be a number of different parts of the molecule that interact with the receptor. As it interacts with the receptor, um, you know, perhaps through charges, perhaps through um, certain structures within the, within the molecular shape, certain ring structures, for example, uh, it tends to pull and distort the ligand binding site, and that will depend on the molecular structure. And thus, the, the shape of the ligand binding site that is adopted uh, or forced by the molecule as it binds in the ligand binding site will be determined by the molecular structure. Um, so this leads us now to kind of an understanding of why when serotonin interacts with the receptor, the 5-HT2A receptor, it induces a different type of shape. Of, of, the, of, the, of the receptor, a different change in conformation, and activates a particular um, set of signaling pathways uh, inside the neuron. Whereas when psilocybin, sorry, psilocin really, or DMT or LSD bind in the receptor, they induce a different conformation and ultimately actually induce different kind of signaling pathways. So in the next video, uh, we will look at this in detail and actually look at some relatively new uh, experimental and modeling studies that actually show why um, serotonin um, is not psychedelic when it binds into the 5-HT2A receptor, whereas LSD, DMT, uh, psilocin are psychedelic. So I'll see you in the next video for that. Awesome. Awesome.